we're at the National Farm Machinery Show in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, very, very busy. A lot of people here. This is crazy. Yeah, it's great. Uh, <laughs> you're working on some really cool stuff at Syngenta as far as uh, multiple crops in a growing season and really trying to push the envelope to you know really, really economically benefit producers. Talk about that a little bit. Sure. Um, I think one of the things that we've done in the past, you know, we've seen, uh, I guess you'd say double cropping uh, would be a, a winter wheat crop followed by soybeans has kind of been the standard, but you'd say a double crop. But we've been really looking at how can we uh, use other crops like corn uh, uh, in rotation with soybeans, maybe grow two crops in the same season. Uh, you know, wheat followed by corn instead of wheat followed by soybeans. Uh, can I grow uh, corn followed by soybeans? Uh, lots of different options. And what we're trying to do is keep uh, keep that acre producing as long as we can is kind of the goal and, and of course from the growers perspective is how can I produce more corn or more beans on on that given acre of land and yeah, uh, so is, the, is, the, is one of the big challenges here to try to you know, still obviously be able to grow multiple crops in the growing season but at the same time still keep the soil you know be nurturing the soil and taking care of the land right and those are sort of there's variables there really it's it's tougher to manage than probably sounds initial. It is. At first it sounds it sounds pretty easy to just Simple. go ahead and plant that, right? Yeah. Okay. But you, you run into things like uh, what herbicide programs do I use now? If I've got a residual herbicide in the ground when I plant my corn, I obviously can't go back and plant beans afterwards. So I have to think ahead, yeah. <laughs> a long time ahead. Um, but one of the things that like you said about managing the land is that if we have ground that's open and uh, for instance we take a, a bean crop off and then it sits open until the next year's corn is planted, that ground's actually subject to erosion and you know it's not, it's not freezing over here, it's, uh, it's open all year. So we're either having to do something tillage wise to control weeds which is you know we're most areas in the south especially they're looking at, at minimum tillage or zero tillage so uh, there's not a lot of that used anymore. Um, Resistant weeds will be become a big problem too. So we we can't just go out and spray a, a glyphosate like we used to and clean that up. Now we're having to use more complicated uh, herbicide programs. Um, so that really makes us think harder about how we're going to manage if we don't have a crop out there. So some of it's why don't we put a crop on the ground? And, well, it's it's really opening up the opportunity for creativity. Yeah, it does. Yeah, in terms sure of does. cropping and how you manage it, and right. you know, also you know, using cropping strategies to manage some of those resistant situations and things like that. Yeah, exactly. So different. Exactly, you can use chemistry in, in a soybean crop maybe that you can't use in a corn crop or vice versa. And of course, with you know multiple traits uh, in our different crops now, with uh, there's more traits coming in soybeans over the next few years that'll have uh, herbicide tolerance. So that'll give us some more opportunities as well. Um, and then some of the traits that we've had, like uh, managing insects, for instance, is another issue. In corn, we've got this, you know, Viptera corn uh, is really a cool uh, trait because in the south, if you plant a corn later in the season, uh, earworm would come in and, and basically take every ear and, and your quality and quantity of corn was really reduced. So it was a, it was a no-brainer. You just didn't plant corn late unless you wanted to spray uh, insecticides all, all summer. Uh, but with the terracorn, it's cool because it really it controls earworms and any lepidopter pests that come in in the, in the late season. So that's opened up a whole other uh, area of cropping that uh, the guys just didn't even consider a few years back. And what about artesian? What is that? Yeah, artesian corn is uh, it's really about optimizing your water use in, in, in corn production and uh, maybe growing more corn when you have less water than would be optimal. Boy, that would have been uh, optimal to use that last year. This was uh, this last year was a great year to, to test it out and it was kind of the maybe the, I guess the first year in a lot of areas that we had had this corn available so growers were able to have a look at, uh, at artesian versus their other varieties and and in this area right in the Kentucky in particular we really had uh, had a, a good test. Uh, some of the corn didn't even pollinate last year because it was so hot and, and dry at pollination time and and yet the artesian really seemed to have the, the ability to kind of manage through that stress, get through the stress and, and produce a, at least a decent yield out of the, out of the uh, versus the areas where they just didn't have any corn at all, you know. Um, and it looks good. It's, it's kind of a, an opportunity to manage risk around uh, whether it's dry land corn where you don't know how much water you're going to have uh, or even irrigated corn where, where uh, the irrigation uh, water that's available might not be uh, something you know up front or you know, might not know how much you're going to need. You're able to use a hybrid that can kind of get through the, the season without fear and it's going to just fall on its face when you put water in it. Kind of so. Okay, Kim, we'll have a great show and thanks for talking to us. Thank you.